morning everybody april 21st 2023 friday i am currently on my way to a service call in salisbury maryland which is a good change of pace for me because i typically i drive at least an hour hour and a half away and our shop is here in salisbury maryland so it's really service call i'm headed to is like 10 15 minutes from the shop so that's pretty neat so um, going to this call now, I was out there last year, last summer, um, and we did a gas and go. We actually did a conversion um, from R22 to uh, 422B um, because I think it was pretty low and we try not to put R22 in the system um, if at all possible. And you can't put 422 on top of R22. Um, it, that's actually illegal. You can't do that. I know guys do it, but you're not supposed to do that. So I um, recovered the remaining R22 and then, then put in 422B. Um, I don't know. I'll have to check my um, my notes in the call slip to see if I, uh, I made any repairs. But either way, the system's not working now. So I'm going to go out there and see what's going on with it. Um, it's a two-system house, and I think the guy wants a PM done for the uh, for the summer, too. So we're going to go out there. We're going to take a look at the one that's not working, try to get them going, service that one, and then uh, service the other one, too. So stay tuned. All right, so apparently the information I was given was wrong. This guy here, this old Lennox, is the one I worked on last year. This is for the upstairs. Um, I don't think he's having trouble with that one. He just explained to me that this is the one he's having trouble with, which is for his downstairs. And this one here is for the sunroom, which is right there. So he said he looked out here and he had some frost on the pipes and uh, thought it was low on charge. So we're going to get into that and see what's going on. Yeah, right off the bat, it's not making very much heat at all. 2014 yeah she's not she's not making no heat the suction line's not cold at all liquid line it's just these are the same temperature so alright let's put the gauges on her and see how low she really is Sub cooling at once holds five and a half pounds and four ten. Right, just get the cover off here. Let's clean it out of here. It's a straight air conditioning unit with a hot water coil. And he has a boiler that supplies uh, hot heating water for his heat. Alright, get the gauges hooked up. We'll see what this thing's doing. Alright. I'd say she's right low. I'd say she should take at least two or three pounds. So before we do Thing. Shut it off. Let's take a look. See if we see any signs of oil anywhere. We'll run around her with the leak detector. Probably check the indoor coil too. Not seeing any oil anywhere. The neighbor's air conditioner just cut on. I'd be willing to wager this leak is in the evaporator coil. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna start there. Alright, I'm gonna run around her with old faithful tech mate. I've had this thing for over 10 years. 
She's found a bunch of leaks for me. She's old. Sounds like a truck passing by, but she'll pick up a leak. Well, that's a welcoming sign of the crawl space. Well, two of them. Hmm. I hope he ain't in there. Damn. Got even more snake skins. Holy crap. All right. We have a Aquatherm Air Handler by First Company. This does, um, this has a hot water coil in it and a refrigeration coil in it. We're going to mainly focus on the hot water, uh, I'm sorry, the refrigeration coil. See if we can find this leak. I wonder if they replaced this air handler in 2014 when they replaced the outdoor unit. It is 410A. See if I can find a date code on it. I'm not very good with first company's serial numbers or date codes. No idea what that means. If that's it. I doubt it. All right, let's get this cover opened up and take a look. Here's our air handler. This one has the internal circulator, which is nice. Here's our coil. I have to get this cover opened up a little bit. I can't take it all the way off because the refrigeration lines go through it and also the drain lines. So I'm gonna try to leak check it the best we can right from here. All right, I popped the top on this condensing unit. I'm going to go around with the leak detector, see if we find anything. alarm all right I'm not coming up with anything out here either so I'm probably going to use a sealant that has UV and it also this stuff here one and done leak stop plus UV oops all right but before I put the top back on and everything um, I am going to rinse this condenser out because it's pretty dirty and we're servicing them anyway so um, I'm gonna take a hose and rinse this bad boy out. all right I've got my charging rig hooked up I'll show you guys how I do this so I use this T here, this T, so my uh, suction side testo is right there, T, and then that will go to my manifold. I'm just using the low side here, we're going to start charging this baby up. charging guys you can uh, watch it all from our iPad here as we're charging I'm gonna do this in one pound increments put a pound in let it stabilize put another pound in let it stabilize 
because I think it's only going to take two, maybe three pounds. So I'm about to cut it off now by the charging port and then let, let our gauges clear out. I've got just over two pounds in it, and I've still not yet made any subcooling. It's getting close though. I'm right about negative half a degree of subcooling. That should start coming up in the next couple minutes. So we've got two pounds in so far. It might actually take more than I thought. It held. Holding charge on the data plate was five and a half pounds. That first company air handler has a pretty significant size coil on it, so both, the whole thing might hold six pounds of refrigerant. We'll see what it ends up at. Yeah, I've got a skosh over four pounds in her. I've got eight degrees of subcooling, uh, 3.7 superheat. I don't know if I'm gonna hit that 12 degrees of subcooling that the uh, data plate says not matched up with that first company air handler uh, I'm pretty close now I'll let it run for a few more minutes and see what uh, see what she settles out at but I think this might be all I'm gonna do I think that might be all I'm gonna put in her all right I haven't added anything else to her she's settled out right around there so I think we'll be good we got the leak stop in her with UV so if we ever have to come back to this we'll look for signs of the UV and um, and fix the leak so, all right I'm gonna take my stuff off of this one and I'm gonna move over to the upstairs unit just to check it out where I was here last year I just want to see how it's doing this is the upstairs unit now and that condenser motor sounds like she's gone on about to lock up. She don't sound too sporty. Yeah, I think it's about time for this one. She's from 1996. Guys, we just finished up with that service call. Um, There's a lot I did that I didn't record, like the when I did the PM on it, and um, uh, just going over some things on that upstairs system. So that upstairs system is on the chopping block. Um, I'm not letting him put any more money in that system. Uh, I don't want to see him put a condenser motor in it, even though it needs it. So, so hopefully he can um, he'll replace that system soon. I'm gonna give him a quote on it see what he says so I mean the system's from 96 I mean they don't owe him nothing that's for sure and the downstairs system um, is from 2014 and that one was, re was replaced in 2014 and was the same age as the upstairs system so that was nine years ago so that means the upstairs system lasted nine more years than the downstairs system did so it's definitely time definitely time um, but we added the, the stop leak to that uh, downstairs system. Uh, we got them charged up. And if um, I have to go back there again and I see a, a low charge situation, I can look around for the UV and try to pinpoint that leak a little better. So, but uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm off for the next one.